Hello there, uh, my name is Ethan Kosak, and I'm going to be talking about basic box modeling in a program called Blender 3D, which is a free program that you can download from blender.org. Um, it's great, it's a full-fledged modeling and animation program, uh, and I really recommend it. So what I'm going to do is just teach a little bit of box modeling, which really kind of applies to any 3D modeling program. Um, but if you'd like to follow along, go to blender.org and download Blender. It's great. Um, so I'm going to launch Blender right out of my dock. And Blender is going to start me off with a little cube, which is great because this is the box part of box modeling. And I'm looking at it top down. If you want to rotate or orbit your camera, then you're going to hold down on your middle mouse button or you're going to hold down Option on your keyboard. Uh, or Alt for you Windows users. And if you hold that option and drag, or if you hold down your middle mouse button, you can now rotate your camera. So, here I am, here's my box, and I am in object mode right now, it says so down here at the bottom. Object mode is what you do when you want to move whole objects, so lights, cameras, cubes, so forth. Uh, if I want to manipulate this, uh, I need to hit tab on my keyboard, which is going to put me into edit mode, change to edit mode down there. And at the moment I'm editing vertices, that's why this button here with the dots on it is depressed, so I need to be editing faces, which is the triangle. I'm going to press that. And now if I right click on individual faces, I can push them and pull them or I can press E on my keyboard to extrude them uh, if I want to model this way. This is a great way to start modeling. If I wanted to scale a face, I can press the S key and then click and drag to scale a face up and down. I can rotate faces by pressing R. Rotate. Create sort of a twist. And I can uh, undo with uh, Command Z. Get back down to my cube here. So that's that forms the basis of modeling. I could actually model lots of things that way. Um, in fact, a lot of people do model just beginning with a cube. It's, it starts out that simple. So if you want to model something that is organic, most you know creatures, people animals, whatever, they're going to be roughly symmetrical. And if an object is symmetrical, you could cut it in half and uh, it's going to be two halves that are really, really similar. Uh, so I can do that in Blender and have my workload. I don't need to model the whole thing. I can add a modifier called a mirror. The mirror modifier by default will usually mirror along the x-axis. So if I just add my modifier right now, I'm going to switch back to object mode for a second, add modifier mirror, and then switch back into edit mode, press A once to deselect the face, and A again to select all faces. Now it, it mirrored along the x-axis. What you don't want when you mirror is an extra face in the middle, a duplicate face, because I've got that should be hollow, so I can press X and faces, and then A again to select all, and now when I push them together, I've got the beginnings of something that when I move it on one side, it changes on the other, and I've just halved my modeling workload. So the other thing you may want to do, as far as that face in the middle there, you know, if I have this going like this, if I want to play with that midline section there, let me zoom in here, I can, I can be overlapping and it doesn't care. Um, so what you may want to do is get them pretty close and then come down to your modifier again and say merge limit, just increase that a bit, and now when I get close, it pops together, they snap together, 
and I don't have to be quite so precise about my modeling. So the next thing I may do um, is you know, I can start outlining the basic shape of my model. I like to do hips first, so I might pull this out a bit and scale it down. Just like this. And then extrude. And when you're doing knees or elbows, or anything that moves a lot or has to move a lot, uh, what you're probably going to want to do is lots of little extrusions like this. Imagine it as a bendy straw, right? The parts that don't need to move a lot don't need a lot of uh, joints, and the parts that are going to move, you want to have lots of little articulations so that it animates correctly. And that's a lot, oh, that's a really wide leg, but that's okay. Um, you could start moving these guys in. Like this. Maybe he's a robot. Okay. Um, so, you know, I've got the beginnings of some legs here, and just make sure that when you extrude up along the top part, that you are deleting the face in the middle, that extra face. So hit X on that face to get rid of it, and uh, and you'll be fine. You won't get any weird duplicate faces. So then I might extrude this, and this time, just to avoid my fat legs here, you can hit S to scale, and then you can pick X, Y, or Z to scale in a certain direction. Oops, S, Y, there we go. So that I don't get messed up there. So he's looking kind of, he's looking okay, he's looking kind of headless scale that down a bit. Watch out for that. Again, watch out for those phases. And... Okay, he's kind of a gingerbread man, but hey, not bad. So, the other thing I may want to do is get all my faces selected, add a subsurf modifier, and increase your subsurf modifier to about level three. So now I have sort of a smoother look, more organic feel. And if I come over here and say set smooth at the bottom left, I don't get that faceted look anymore. I get a smoothed out look. And I have the beginnings of something that would be animatable. So Call me up, Pixar, and, uh, and I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.